Today we're going to be talking about piezoelectricity. You know, we've covered many of the material properties needed, uh, you know, to understand behaviors of materials under different forces, under electric fields. Um, and today we're going to be covering, uh, you know, starting to cover piezoelectricity, the real meat of the course. So piezoelectricity uh, is a pretty unique phenomenon, and it's called, you know, materials which have piezoelectricity are called smart materials. Uh, the reason, more or less, why we're calling these materials mm -hmm. smart is because they have a unconventional um, coupling. So, we, if, for example, let's take, for example, a dumb material. Let's say we have a piece of metal. Okay. And it has length L. And if you increase the temperature, delta T, temperature is increasing. And this chip material is going to grow a little bit longer. It's going to get bigger. And when things and or materials, you know, expand as a result of, you know, temperature or then we call this you know thermal expansion but take for the other example say you have a material you know let's say that same metal and you pulled it so instead of increasing in temperature to increase the size you pulled it uh, to increase the size would the temperature go up the answer is no so basically what we can say here is that if we increase temperature, we increase size, but if we increase size, we do not increase temperature. And this is the fact that these two effects are not coupled. So the temperature increase is not coupled uh, inversely with the, uh, with, the, with the size of the material. Therefore, it is only has one-way transduction. So we call, for example, heat to strain or rather temperature temperature to strain this is one way if you think about the other way you know it does not exist no it doesn't work like that but piezoelectric materials are different they're not dumb they're actually pretty cool so in piezoelectricity, uh, as the name suggests, piezo is force. Electricity uh, refers to you know electrons, charge, electrical energy. Uh, this refers to force electricity. So essentially, uh, what is called the direct piezoelectric effect, and uh, you know I, the way I remember this word direct piezoelectric effect and indirect, I kind of think about to myself which one was discovered first. The direct piezoelectric effect was discovered first because it's easy to apply forces, right? Forces are really easy apply, easily applied. So we apply a force on a piezoelectric material or a strain over an area, as we learned earlier, and we get positive and negative charges. So we get charges developing on the surface, and this is known as piezoelectricity. You apply a pressure, you know, a force on the material, and you get charges appearing on the surface. And thus the charges, you know, they make an electric field, they, they represent a, a, a stored in electrical energy. But the thing which makes piezoelectric materials smart is that bo they both show, you know, electrical energy as a result of mechanical force and as a result of electrical energy. So this time, let's say we have electrodes on the top and bottom of the material. We hook it up to some potential source. This material is going to get bigger. It's going to expand. Or it's going to shrink depending on the sign of the field. So we basically have force creating charge. And we also have a, you know, electric field, which is you know electrical energy. It also creates displacement. So we have this coupling. So let's sum it up again. So we have force creates charge 
you know, when you have electric field. Creating strain. And you know, these are related and these are related. So we really have actually uh, a coupling which occurs. And this is kind of cool because piezoelectric materials can be used as both actuators and sensors. Let's say you want to make some type of motor or some type of th uh, you know thing that displaces. You know, actuator is something that moves other things. So let's say you have this bar of piezoelectric material. You have the top and bottom. Let's say the top and bottom of the material have electrodes on them. You apply voltage difference, and the material expands. Right expands. So let's see you have like a mass over here. The mass you can move the moves, move the mass back and forth by applying different electric fields or different voltages. The same way, so this actuator. The same way you can use this same exact material as a sensor. So let's say you had a piezoelectric material here and you apply you put a mass on top of it okay there's going to be a voltage induced because that mass is causing a force let's say gravity is down you know I mean, the mass is causing a force which is causing a voltage difference so you can sense the mass and this is uh, the principle used in microphones and other and so, some microphones and and, uh, and uh, accelerometers where this whole thing is shaking you know we have this common symbol X, you know, we sh we showed this as the reference of the uh, piezoelectric element, and the piezoelectric element is attached to your vehicle or whatever your whatever is shaking. This is shaking up and down, right? And this mass is also shaking up and down, and it's causing a uh, inertial force on the piezoelectric material. And this inertial force is causing a voltage due to the charge developed, and you can measure that voltage. And what you know, the acceleration because you know the charge. So these materials are very unique and can be used as an actuator and sensor. And in some applications use both the actuation uh, principle of the material and the sensing principle uh, of the material. A common uh, application of this is ultrasound where we're using sound waves to measure um, and, and, and make pictures and try to determine what's under the surface. So, you know, in medical ultrasound, obviously, you're looking at different um, organs and, and uh, fetuses. Well, let's say you had some object, you know, we, let's say we have the ground, you know, and we have, we have a piezoelectric material on top of it. And then did we, you know, apply a voltage, an alternating voltage. You're applying alternating voltage. This piezoelectric element is going to shake around. And it'll also make some sound waves coming in here. And we hit this foreign object. What's going to happen is this foreign object is going to shoot things back and we can detect. So basically by doing this, you can detect the distance which this foreign object is under the surface by the reflective wave. So first of all, use the piezoelectric effect, the indirect, because we're applying a um, voltage to get and we to make a sound wave or to make a wave a pressure wave in the in the material and then it bounces back and it then we receive the wave we feel some voltage change and therefore uh, we can both use this material as a sensor and actuator uh, for actually several applications